enjoy the practice. Welcome to the palace, enjoy the class. Good morning everybody, we'll be getting started in about a minute, so if you could just find your way onto your mats and just take a comfortable seat. Make yourself comfortable. Mute everybody. So as you find your way onto your mat, just make yourself as comfortable as possible. Find an upright seated position. And just close down your eyes. As you close down your eyes, just let yourself settle into the awareness that you have arrived here for a reason, and the reason is for practice. Yoga is first and foremost a spiritual practice. And it just, it really helps at the start of your practice just to, to make this recognition in your head that yes, I am here for a reason and the reason is of a spiritual nature. And as you close your eyes, just let your breathing settle. Take a deep breath into the back of the lungs. Push the air out of the lungs. Give yourself permission to inhabit the space that you're in, in full presence. As you take up the space, I wanted to talk this morning a little bit about some of the, the elements of yoga that Patanjali explains in the second chapter of the sutras, the sadhana pada, which is the pada on practice, and it's particularly a smitta, which is our ego complex as human beings, and, and how this ego complex is understood and how it can be overcome. So the ego complex is, is specifically explained as anything that causes separation between the self and another thing. And this has made me sort of, the first time I started studying I was a little bit, well that's a, that's a big thing because everything has to have separation between, between me, that's sort of the way I view the world. And as you start to weave your way through the understanding of yoga more, it becomes first and foremost paramount that we connect to all beings and everything and we see everything as one interconnected web of energy. And through this here, it leads on to the understanding of the way that we view the world as, as human beings and we compartmentalize f factions of reality. It, it becomes a hindrance later on in our practice as we're trying to dissolve these factions. So. In the sense of, we might seem or think that labelling ourselves as one thing is of benefit. However, this label, although it might come from a pure place of love, eventually becomes a hindrance to us. And in the sense of that, I just wanted to take some time to explain the way the, the Zen Buddhist monks try to overcome this paradox that forms when we start to, to view the world in this way. And uh, Suzuki Roshi, he's a very brilliant author, he writes a book and it's a very interesting read called The Beginner's Mind. And he explains that in politics we have the left and the right wing. And in order to have the left, we have to have the right. And the left wing in politics is never obviously fond of the right, they don't like each other, but the right also don't like the left. But through the level of thinking is that they're both interconnected in a way that one does not exist without the other. These idealistic views that one side clings to cannot exist without the opposition of the other. And if we just let ourselves embody that thought for a moment, it can start to dissolve the kind of separation that we cause from identifying ourselves with our ego. So as we practice today, something that I find really empowering and connecting to be between people is the breath and the way that unfortunately we're not in a classroom together, we're not practicing side by side, but energetically we've found our way to our mat here today.
together to practice as one Sangha or community. And we will be following the same sequence at the same time, breathing to the same pattern together. It's harmonization between souls, between people across the world is something that can empower us to feel the connection between us and the people that sit beside us. It can break down the walls of separation. And it's one of the most powerful tools to build empathy towards our fellow human beings and our fellow animals and for our planet, our earth. And for everybody that might not be of the same opinion as you, but you can start to see them for what they are and that is a pure innocent soul doing the best that they can to make sense of reality. So come onto your mats and just touch your forehead to the floor. In child's pose, extending the arms forward. And as you do this, recognize that everybody right now is touching their forehead to the floor in the same manner. Close down your lips and start to breathe entirely through your nose, the Ujjayi breathing. The subtle restriction of the vocal cords. If you feel the breath enter your body, let yourself become fully aware of the in-breath. Know you are breathing in, Tina, your dog is amazing. Arriving in this present moment, we awaken our vow to cut all disturbances. This is our time for practice. Follow your breath all the way into your body. Again, just drop away any thoughts of what you were doing before your practice and drop away any thoughts of what was to come after your practice. And through the dis disillusion of these two craving and averting styles of thinking, we encounter the present moment. And as we encounter this present moment, our practice becomes actualized, it becomes real, it becomes wholehearted. Just extend your arms forward. Reach your fingertips as far forward as you can. Take the seat a little bit back. And then tucking the toes under, lift the sitting bones high and extend your legs into downward facing dog. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Lift up onto the toes. And as you exhale, bend your right knee, lower your left heel to the floor. Inhale, come up. Exhale, switch the feet. Inhale, come up. Exhale, switch. Follow that, keep coming up and switching. Just move to your own rhythm, move to your own breath. This is the warm up, so just let yourself do anything you need to do to shake off any tightness in the body, any stiffness anywhere, follow it organically. Gonzo, can you just move the mat forward a little bit for me? And lower both heels down to the floor and just really embody your downward facing dog. Pull the tummy muscles in, tighten the core, Uddiyana Bandha, Mula Bandha, Jalandhara Bandha. Just feel the activation subtly between these three energetic centers in the body. Now, keeping your hips where they are, lifted up high, walk your hands back towards your feet. Good. Now stop there, take your elbows and let your head drop forward, hang forward. Feel as if someone was pulling you down from the very top part of your head. And then feel as if your legs were growing roots deep down into the floor. Be strong through the legs, be strong in the base. Switch the ends on the elbows if you haven't already done through. Maybe shake your head from side to side. No. Nod your head. Yes. Release the palms to the floor. Keeping the hips lifted as high as possible. Walk the hands forward. Find downward facing dog. Breathe in. Breathe out. Now imagine someone is pulling you up from your hips. See if you can actualize that movement. Feel the sitting bones lift towards the sky. Good. Now try to lengthen the back of the legs by just lowering the heels to the floor, but keeping the sitting bones lifted where they are. Your breath is now moving deeply into the back of your lungs. You're starting to feel the shoulders opening. And walk the feet towards the hands. Feet towards hands, otherwise. <laughs> Stop there, lengthen the spine, 
And then walk the fingertips as far forward as you can and let your head drop between your hands. See if you can reach your fingertips forward, but also press your heels back to, into the floor. Lift the sitting bones a little bit higher, grow long through the body, but no tension in the neck. Stay a little bit longer, reach a little bit further forward. Good, now tiptoe your feet as wide as your mat. And then bend your knees, coming into a deep squat, bringing the hands together into a prayer. Pushing the elbows into the knees. Lift the chest, roll the shoulders down. Try and bring the shoulder blades together. Clear the heart, breathe deep into the back of the lungs. Maybe just move your body weight from one leg to the other, just organically moving while we're warming up. If you want a little bit more, extend the left arm out to the side, place it onto the floor and reach the right fingertips high to the sky, opening up through the body. Use the left elbow to push the left knee out to the side, expand through the chest. Good, come back to centre, bring the hands to prayer and extend the right arm out to the side, reach the left fingertips up, look up at your left fingertips, push the right elbow into the right knee, see if you can encourage it out to the side just a little bit more. And reach the fingertips a little higher and bring the hands to prayer, come back. Extending through the legs, hands to the floor, tiptoe your feet back together and then slowly now roll up a vertebrae by vertebrae to a standing position. Now let's activate the legs firmly here, pressing all four corners of the feet down into the floor. Kneecaps lifted because the quadriceps are engaged. Feel your tailbone, tuck it under slightly, lengthen it down towards the ground. These strong legs, we keep them in every standing asana. We want to imagine that all four corners of each foot are always pressed down into the floor when we're doing so. We are tall like a mountain in Tadasana. We are solid. Embody the posture, embody your practice. Bring the hands together in front of the heart. Following our breath into the present moment, we awaken our vow to cut all disturbances. This is our time for practice. All together inhaling. Om. Exhale, release your arms alongside your body. Surya Namaskara. Inhale, take your arms up, reach up, grow tall. Exhale, fold forward, Uttanasana, finger and toes in one line. Inhale, lengthen, pull your chest forward. Exhale, step back, lower, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. And exhale, back downward facing dog. Breathe deep as you inhale. Exhale, one. Inhale. Exhale, two. Inhale, exhale, three, pull the sitting bones higher. Inhale, exhale, four, good rhythm. Inhale, exhale, soften your knees, look forward. Inhale, step or jump the feet, lengthen the spine, pull the chest forward. Exhale, fold over your legs. Inhale, lift arms, lift torso, reach all the way up. Exhale, release, Tadasana. Good, one more. Inhale, take your arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lengthen, pull the chest forward. Exhale, step or jump, Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Breathe in. Breathe out. There's one breath going in. One breath going out. Your attention is fixated on your breath. Inhale. Exhale three. Inhale. Exhale four. Inhale. Exhale, soften the knees, gaze four. Inhale, step feet or jump, lengthen spine, look four. Exhale, fold over your legs. Inhale, lift your arms, look up, reach the fingertips high. Exhale, release. Stay in this. Inhale, take your arms up, reach up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lengthen the spine and look forward. 
Exhale, step or jump, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhaling, downward facing dog. Sitting bones are high, breathe in. Breathe out one. Inhale. Exhale, two. Inhale. Exhale, three. Breath awareness. Inhale. Exhale, four. Stay with it. Inhale. Exhale, soften the knees. Look forward. Inhale, step or jump. Spine long, gaze forward. Exhale, fold in. Inhale, lift arms up overhead. Reach prayer hands up. Exhale, release. Inhale, deeply bend knees, chair position. Exhale, fold forward and extend through your legs. Inhale, lengthen the spine, look forward. Exhale, step or jump, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Right foot steps forward, left heel down. Inhale, up, warrior one. Exhale, take your hands to the floor, step back, chaturanga dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Left foot steps forward, right heel down. Inhale, come up, warrior one. Exhale, hands to the floor, step back, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog, stay. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out too. Follow your breath deeply, inhale. Exhale three, really follow it. Inhale. Exhale four. Inhale. Exhale, soften knees, look forward. Inhale, step or jump, spine long, gaze forward. Exhale, fold in. Inhale, deeply bend the knees, chair position. Exhale, release to Tadasana. Breathe in. Breathe out. Inhale, hook thumbs, reach up and arch back. Exhale, bend knees, swing your arms behind you, extend legs, fold. Inhale, palms to the floor, right foot steps back to lunge. Exhale, left foot next to right, downward facing dog. Inhale, forward to plank. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhaling, upward facing dog. Exhaling, downward facing dog. Inhale, forward into plank. Exhale, lower knees, chest, chin down. Inhale, slide forward into cobra, roll the shoulders. Exhale, tuck toes, seat to heels, extend the legs. Inhale, right foot steps forward to lunge. Exhale, left foot next to the right, downward fold in. Inhale, bend the knees, hook the thumbs, reach up and arch back. Exhale, bend your knees, swing your arms behind your back, fold. Inhale, hands to floor, left foot steps back. Exhale, right foot next to left, down dog. Inhale, forward into plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog, look up. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, float forward to plank. Pull your body from your core. Exhale, drop knees, chest and chin. Inhale, slide forward. Exhale, tuck toes, press seat back, down dog. Inhale, left foot steps forward to lunge, look forward. Exhale, right foot next to left, fold. Inhale, bend your knees, hook your thumbs, reach up, arch back. Exhale, release. Good, separate your feet hip distance apart now. Take your hands to your hips. Press your feet firmly down into the floor. Grow tall through the crown of the head and then arch back slightly, stay there. Good, arch back a little bit further. Good, stay there. Arch back a little bit more. Now come up and as you exhale, fold all the way forward. Bend the knees slightly, peace grip the big toes. As you inhale, pull your chest forward, extend the legs. Exhale, fold in, elbows go wide, chest moves towards the thighs. Crown of the head folds itself forward, there's no tension in your neck. Pull your shoulders away from your ears and let your spine be long. Hook the thumbs on top of the peace fingers and complete the mudra. Extend your legs, activate the channels on the inside of your legs and see if you can lift your sitting bones a little bit higher towards the sky. Keeping the shoulders away from the ears, keep that tension free from the neck. Stay a little bit longer, fold forward a little bit more. 
Inhale, lengthen the spine and look forward. Exhale, place the hands on the hips. Inhale, with a flat back, come all the way up. And exhale, step the feet back together. Good. Inhale, take the arms up overhead, reach up. Exhale, fold all the way forward. Inhale, lengthen the spine, pull the chest forward. Exhale, step or jump, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Right foot steps forward, left heel down. Inhale, come up, warrior one. Stay, exhale. Bend your right knee a little bit deeper. Make sure the outside edge of your left foot has contact with the floor. Now drive your back heel into the floor and push the energy up into your chest. Feel the line and then bend the right knee deeper as you hold on to that line. Stay for a little bit longer. Go a little bit lower on the right leg. Good, inhale. Exhale, arms wide, warrior two. Inhale, extend through the right leg. Exhale, reach forward, forward, then down. Take Trikonasana, gaze is on your left fingertips. Breathe in, breathe out. Ball of the right foot presses down, left heel into the floor. You're squeezing your legs together. The scissoring action pulls everything into the waist. Tighten the waist up and extend the crown of the head forward by lengthening both sides of your body. If it feels comfortable, take your gaze directly to your left fingertips. Stay there, breathe in, breathe out. Stay for one more breath. Inhale. Exhale. Now inhale, look down. Exhale, soften your right knee and move your right hand forward in front of your foot. Inhale, lift the back leg off the floor, Ardha Chandrasana. Now, if you're comfortable, you can start to shift the gaze to the left fingertips. Good. You want to flex the back leg, be strong through the standing leg, and roll the hip on top. Breathe a little bit longer. One more breath. Exhale, good. Inhale, left hand to the floor. Square the hips, lengthen the spine, look forward. Exhale, fold over and lift the back leg. Three breaths, inhale. Exhale, one. Inhale. Exhale, two, lift the stand, lift the back leg. Inhale. Exhale. Good, inhale, lengthen the spine and look forward. Now as you exhale, spiral your left knee down, almost touch the floor on the outside edge of the right foot. Inhale, spiral back up, open the hip. Exhale, go down, roll in, compress the torso. Inhale, go all the way up. And exhale, spiral it all the way down. Left knee's on the outside edge of the right foot. You take a seat, setting up for Ardha Matsyandrasana. Ground through your seat. And as you inhale, reach the left arm up. Exhale, twist to the right, hooking the left elbow on the right knee. Look out over the right shoulder. Ground down through the seat. If you want to take it a little bit deeper, you can find a bind. Good. Stay with that for a little bit longer. Breathe deep. And then inhale, come back to the centre. Now sweep the left leg around and take Gomukhasana legs. No, no, Gomukhasana legs. Yeah, like that. Good. So your left leg is on top of your right, yeah? So take your right arm up overhead, then bend the right elbow, take it behind your back. Bring your left arm down underneath your back and catch the right fingertips. If possible, if not, take your shirt. Squeeze in the hands together and lift the chest. Breathe deep. See if you can push the head into the elbow and just open the back of the neck a little bit more, feeling the release through the shoulders. Stay a little bit longer. And release the hands to the floor. Sweep the left leg to the back of the mat, right leg. And exhale, press, step back, downward facing dog. Breathe in, breathe out, inhale, exhale. Good, left foot steps forward, warrior one. Right heel down, come up. Now you wanna make sure the outside edge of the back foot is contacted with the floor. Don't do anything till you've found that contact point. Now, bend your left leg a little bit deeper. Push the right heel firmly into the floor, extend your right leg fully, push the energy from the right heel into the chest and up into the fingertips. Take the gaze to the thumbs if it's possible. Now bend the left leg a little bit deeper. 
Really stay, one more breath. Go lower. Inhale, exhale, open up, warrior two. Inhale, extend through the left leg. Exhale, reach forward, then down, trikonasana, gaze to the right fingertips, breathe in, breathe out. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, breathe in, breathe out. Inhale, exhale. Now, inhale, look down. Exhale, bend your left knee, move your left fingertips forward to the floor in front of you. Inhale, lift the back leg up, find your balance. And if it feels okay, you can shift the gaze to the right fingertips. Good, stay there. So the left leg's down on the floor and you're trying to roll your right hip on top of your left. Opening up, breathing deep. Good, stay strong. One more breath. Exhale, good. Inhale, take the hand, right hand to the floor, lengthen the spine, look forward, square the hips. Exhale, fold over. Breathe in, breathe out. Two more breaths, inhale. Exhale, inhale. Exhale. Now inhale, lengthen the spine and look forward. Exhale, spiral your right knee to the outside edge of the left foot. Almost touch the floor. Inhale, go back and up. Open the hip. Exhale, spiral it down. Inhale, go back and up. And exhale, spiral it all the way down. Take a seat for Adha Matsi and Dasana. Breathe in. Breathe out. Reach the right fingertips up to the sky. Ground through your seat. And as you exhale, twist, look out over your left shoulder. Feel your seat pressing down into the floor. Your chest is lifting. Crown of the head is extending. And every time you exhale, there's space that gets created in the body for you to go a little bit deeper. Breathe in. Breathe out. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Good. Inhale. Come back to centre. Now sweep the legs. Come into Gomukhasana position. So you want to take, wait, you guys don't wrong, you did it backwards the other way. Anyway, right arm goes up first, left arm goes round the back. Squeeze the fingers together. If you can't find the bind, just find your shirt. Now push your head into your elbow and open the shoulders a little bit more. Stay for one more deep breath. Good. Release the hands to the floor. Sweep the left leg to the back of the mat. Tuck the toes under. Find your downward facing dog. Breathe in. Breathe out. Inhale. Exhale. Step the right foot to the outside edge of the right hand. Drop the left knee down to the floor. Good. Come down onto your forearms if it's, up, if it's comfortable for you. If not, you can stay up on the fingertips. Now you want to tuck the back toe under and extend the back leg. See if you can press the left heel back to the back of the room and lengthen the crown of the head forward. Sink the pelvis down lower towards the floor. Lift the chest and be broad through the collarbones. Try and keep the right knee touching the right shoulder though. You don't want to go in too far out to the side. Stay for one more deep breath here. Good. Now drop the left knee down to the floor. Bring the left hand, sorry, the right hand to the instep of the right knee. Push the right knee out to the side. You want to create space through your chest and come onto the outside edge of the right foot as you're doing this. Press the left elbow firmly down into the floor and see if you can create separation between the right thigh bone and the chest by pushing it out to the side. Stay a little bit longer. Now bring both hands back to the floor and bring your right shin bone parallel to the front edge of the mat or at 45 degrees, setting up for a pigeon. 
Walk the left toes towards the back of the room. See if you can get the pelvis close to the floor. Lift the chest, open the heart, and then fold yourself forward. Take the forearms to the floor and just let your right hip open as best as possible. Send the breath deep into the right hip. Be blank in the mind. Be open to anything. Slowly bring the hands underneath the shoulders. Tuck the left toes underneath, press it back downward facing dog. Breathe in, breathe out. Left foot steps to the outside of the left hand as you inhale. And as you exhale, the right knee drops down to the floor. Lower yourself down onto your forearms. Now just get your forearms positioned parallel to each other and allow your chest to open. Then you might want to extend through the right leg. Press the right heel back towards the back of the room. Pull the elbows in towards the body. Get lower with the torso and see if you can expand the, the length of the spine. You want a long spine. You want to get rid of any rounding in your back. It's going to push all the energy into your hips. Really press the right heel back firmly. Stay a little bit longer as you open the hip. Good, now keeping the right forearm on the floor, bring the left hand to the left knee. Push the left knee out to the side and see if you can create space between your left thigh bone and your chest. Open it right out to the side. Sink the pelvis down towards the floor. Breathe deep. One more breath here. Good, now bring the left thigh bone parallel to the front edge of the mat, if it's possible. If not, you can have the left shin bone, 45 degrees, that's okay. And walk the right toe to the back of the mat. Get yourself set up, lift the chest, pull your chest forward, create length, and then fold forward over that left leg. Take the chin or the chest to the floor, and now you want to actively send the breath. One of the cities mentioned in the third chapter, the Vibhuti chapter, is the ability to send breath to particular parts of the body when necessary. And we do this in our practice when we find ourselves in a long holding position like this. We're just consciously sending the breath to the area that we feel stretching. And over time through practice, we'll be able to let that area actively release. So start in postures like this, where there's not too much going on in the mind, we can actively send the breath into that left hip, feel it releasing. And just letting go of any ideologies that might be running through your head and just let yourself be fully embodied in the posture. Breathe deep. Then slowly walk the hands underneath the shoulders. Tuck the back toe underneath. Take it back downward facing you. Breathe in. Breathe out. Inhale, step your right foot forward between your hands. Exhale, lower your left heel to the floor. Left heel. Inhale, reach the left arm up to the sky. Exhale, extend the left arm overhead and twist the shoulders, pressing the right palm down into the floor. Pashvokanasana. Now embody the posture. Breathe in. Breathe out. Press your right knee into your right armpit and press your right hand down into the floor. Roll the left shoulder on top of the right. Extend the left fingertips forward as you press your left heel down into the floor. Grow long. Sink down into your right hip as well. Breathe. Stay a little bit longer. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, left hand to the floor, back heel lifts. Exhale, extend through the right leg. Inhale, step the back foot in slightly, ground the heel, square the hips, lengthen the spine. Exhale, fold yourself forward. 
Squeezing your legs together as best you can. Interlace your fingers behind your back. Tuck your chin into your chest and roll your arms overhead. Breathe deep. Try and keep your hips square by squeezing your feet firmly down into the floor. Squeeze your palms together and take your shoulders a little bit more open. One more deep breath. Good. Release the hands to the floor. Soften the front leg and exhale. Step back downward, facing the dog. Breathe in. Breathe out. Inhale. Step left foot between the hands. Exhale. Lower the right heel down to the floor. Inhale, reach the right fingertips high and lengthen. Then exhale, rolling the chest open, extend the right arm forward overhead, palm facing down. Same thing, press your left hand down into the floor. Really press and roll the right shoulder on top, opening the chest to the side of the room, but keep the ribs tucked in while you do this. Press the left knee into the left armpit. Press the outside edge of the right foot down into the floor and extend that energy all the way through to the right fingertips. You want to lengthen that line. Breathe deep. Inhale. Exhale. One more breath. Inhale. Exhale. Good. Inhale, right hand to the floor, back heel lifts. Exhale, extend the front leg. Inhale, step the back foot in slightly. Ground the heel, square the hips. Exhale, fold yourself forward. Now squeeze your legs together. Make sure your hips are square. Check on them first. Keep them there. Now interlace your fingers behind your back. Tuck your chin into your chest. And take your arms overhead. Make sure the ball of the front foot, press it down. Squeeze the legs together. If you're going to feel that, just manipulate your body back into a more square position. Strong in the legs, strong in the base always. Stay for one more breath. Good, release the palms in the floor, soften the front knee, and exhale, step back downward, facing dog. Breathe in, breathe out. Inhale, take your right leg up to the sky. Exhale, right knee to the right elbow. Inhale, go back and up. Exhale, right knee to the chin. Inhale, back and up. Exhale, right knee to the left elbow and extend the leg out to the side. Press the outside edge of the right foot down into the floor and reach the right arm up to the sky. Press the left fingertips firmly down. Lift your hips as high as you can. Stay a little bit longer. Create as much space in your body as you can. And then slowly come down. Left hand to the floor. Step back down with facing dog. Breathe in, breathe out. Inhale, left leg to the sky. Exhale, left knee, left elbow. Inhale, go back and up. Exhale, left knee to chin. Inhale, back and up. Exhale, left knee to right elbow. Cross the body, extend the leg out to the side. Press the hand down to the floor and reach your right fingertips high. Lift the hips up. Breathe deep. Hold it for a little bit longer. Good, and then slowly bring it back the way you came down when facing dog. Breathe deep. Inhale, move the body forward into a plank. Exhale, drop down onto your forearms. Take a low plank. Now interlace your fingers. Walk your feet towards you, lifting your hips high to the sky. So you lift your hips high to the sky, press your elbows down to the floor and move your chest towards your knees. Let your head drop between your hands. Keep pressing the elbows firmly down into the floor. Inhale, move the chin and touch it to the thumbs, forward. Exhale, take it back. Inhale, go forward, touch it. Exhale, go back. Now this time, inhale, go forward. See if you can take the chin to the floor in front of the hands. Exhale, go back. Stay, breathe. Come back up onto the hands. Downward facing dog. Breathe. Drop the knees to the floor. 
bring the hands back slightly, set yourself up for a tripod headstand. So have your hands shoulder distance apart, bend the elbows, chaturanga the arms and take the crown of the head to the floor. Extend the legs, walk the hips high. Then bring the left knee, place it on the left tricep, bring the right knee in, place it on the right tricep. Squeeze your elbows together and extend your legs to the sky. Slowly bring your legs down with control, coming down the same way you came in. If you found your way onto your mat, just take a child's pose. Deeply surrender, take your time. Extending the arms forward, find your way into a downward facing dog position. Inhale, move the body forward into plank. Exhale, chaturanga all the way down onto your abdomen. Now bring your elbows directly underneath your shoulders, bring your forearms to the floor and we'll set up for a sphinx pose. In sphinx pose, what we're going to do is press the pelvis down into the floor. As you press the pelvis down into the floor, you're going to pull the elbows back in towards the body, feel the chest get moved forward. Stay long through the neck, keep the shoulders away from the ear. Even spread your fingers wide and press your fingertips down into the floor. You really want to make contact with the floor as you pull the chest forward. You're trying to create space through each vertebrae. Imagine the vertebrae are like this and you want to expand the space between them. It gives you more range of motion. Press the pelvis down a little firmer. Pull the chest forward. Lift the heart a little more. Good. Now bend your knees and catch your ankles from the outside edges. Take the hands to the ankles, roll the shoulders away from the ears. Kicking the feet into the hands, come up, lift your knees and your shoulders at the same time. Try and keep your knees close together. Kick harder into the hands with the feet and it will pull you up. Breathe deep. Stay a little bit longer. And then lower yourself down one cheek to the floor. Release the feet, just move your hips from side to side. Bring the hands underneath the shoulders. Tuck the toes under, push back downward facing dog. Step the feet in halfway to the hands. Now, place your knees into your triceps, bend your elbows and come into Bakasana. Lift your hips high, lift your feet off the floor. Spread your fingers wide, have weight in your fingertips. Squeeze your elbows in together. Challenge yourself to stay a little bit longer. See if you can extend your arms slightly. Press the floor away. When you're ready, if you feel like it, jump back, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog, flush it out. Exhale, downward facing dog. Step the right foot forward between the hands as you inhale. Drop the left knee down to the floor. Bring both hands onto the right knee. Now push your right knee forward. Good. Keep the hips where they are. Keep the chest lifted. Inhale, take your arms up overhead. Now exhale, bring your arms around behind your back. Interlace your fingers and point your index finger towards the floor. Roll your shoulders down. See if you can touch the floor with your index fingers by arching the back and lifting the chest. Sink down into the hips a little bit deeper. Good, breathe. If the breathing becomes restricted, you've gone too deep. Come out of the posture a little bit. Breathe in. Breathe out. Two more breaths. Inhale. Exhale, one more. Inhale. Exhale, slowly bring the hands to frame the right foot and step it back, downward facing dog. Switching sides, stepping the left foot forward, dropping the right knee down. 
Now bringing both hands onto your left knee, just push your left knee forward and sink down into your pelvis. Now you wanna look, make sure your left knee doesn't go in front of your left ankle. If it does, walk your left ankle forward. Now bring your hands up overhead, grow tall through both sides of the body. Now bring your arms behind your back, interlace your fingers and point your index fingers to the floor. Lift the chest, on to just take your fingers back a little bit, like diagonally, there you go. Sink down through the pelvis, lift the chest. Feel that? Breathe into the back of the lungs, we'll stay for two more, inhale. Exhale, inhale, exhale. Now inhale, slowly come up. Bring the hands to the floor, step it back, downward facing dog. Breathe in, breathe out. Inhale, go forward into plank. Exhale, chaturanga all the way onto your abdomen. Now if you have a block or a book or something between your hands, Extend your arms forward and hold the block between your hands. If you don't have a block, you can imagine the block is there, it still works. Now you want to bring your feet together so your ankles are touching, but you want to keep your feet on the floor for the first one. Now I want you to lift the block up the floor, off the floor with your legs extended and extend your arms and try and reach the block forward and up diagonally at the same time. Go as high as you can with the hands. Keep breathing. Lift a little bit higher. Good, now lower down, take the forehead to the floor. Squeeze the ankles together. This time, just lift your ankles off the floor. As high as you can, squeeze the muscles in the back to get them a little bit and try to lengthen the heels back towards the back of the room as you lift up. Stay a little longer and lower down. Now, squeezing the ankles together, we'll do both. Inhale, lift up. Exhale one, point the toes. Grow longer as you lift. Feel the vertebrae lengthen, lift higher. Challenge yourself. Up a little bit more. One more breath, inhale. Exhale, take it down. Breathe in, breathe out. Inhale, exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Good. Bring the hands underneath the shoulders. Tuck the toes under and take it back downward facing dog. Just walk the downward facing dog in 10 centimeters, 20 centimeters. Take your left hand to your right ankle and look out underneath your right armpit. Good, bring the hand back to the floor, switch it over. Looking out under the left armpit this time. Just feel the spine releasing. And release both hands to the floor. Stay there. Inhale, move your body forward into a plank. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, now upward facing dog. You're gonna hold upward facing dog. You wanna extend your arms fully, keep your shoulders away from your ears, press the tops of the feet down and activate your quadriceps more so that your knees are lifted. See if you can push the chest forward, roll the shoulders down the back, stay a little bit longer, and then exhale all the way down onto your abdomen. Slowly release, breathe in. Breathe out, inhale, exhale, breathe in, breathe out. Extend the right arm forward, roll over onto your back. Bending the knees, having the feet flat to the floor, close to the buttocks. Now, your heels are hip distance apart, parallel to each other. You're going to press your heels down and lift your hips as high as you can. Walk your hands underneath. Interlace your fingers, get your shoulders right underneath you. Now press the heels down and move the chest towards the chin. Feel that thoracic part of the body opening. 
Press down a little bit more, lift a little bit higher. Good. Now release the arms alongside the body. So we're coming into the wheels. There's going to be some variations. If you don't feel like doing the variations, they're completely optional. Just do normal wheels. For the first round, bring the hands next to the shoulders with the fingers facing towards your body. And inhale, come up. Press hands, press feet. Walk the hands closer towards your body. Evenly press hands and feet. Opening the chest, lifting the pelvis towards the sky. Stay a little bit longer. Press firmly down into the floor with your hands and your feet. Now tuck your chin into your chest, come down onto your back. Breathe deep. Hands come next to the ears, fingers face towards your body. First variation will be Ekapada Ulva Dhanurasana, so one leg will be going up. I'll instruct you to do so. If you're not doing it, just do five breaths in your wheel, then come down. Inhale, lift up. Press hands and feet. Good. Walk your feet together. Pull your right knee into your chest and extend the right leg up, pointing the right toe. Stay for three breaths here. Really see if you can lift that right leg up, but press the hands and the feet firmly down. And then bend the right leg, place the right foot down to the floor, switch it over left side, pull the left knee in and extend. Extend the left leg high, point the foot. Stay strong through the shoulders. Lower the left leg down. Separate the feet wide, chin to chest, lower onto your back. Allow the sensations. Whatever is arising, just let it arise freely. We've opened the front part of the body up. These sort of back bends can cause a lot of energy to flow. Just let it be. Don't entangle with it. Don't try and entertain it. Don't try and understand it. Just let it release. Let it move. Good. Last round. Hands next to ears. Fingers face towards your body. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, drop down onto your crown of your head. Bring the hands underneath you and in, bring the forearms to the floor and interlace the fingers like you were doing a headstand. Now if you're comfortable there, try to see if you can extend your legs. If your legs are becoming extended, press the feet firmly down into the floor, press the elbows down into the floor and move the chest away from the floor. Stay a little bit longer. Feel the back body expanding. And then very slowly come back, bending the knees, walking the feet underneath, bring the hands to the floor, lift up, chin tucks to the chest, and you lower yourself down. Breathe in. Breathe out. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Relaxing in. Extend the legs to the sky and wrap your right leg around your left. Double wrap and include the calf muscles. Take the arms wide, just move the hips slightly over to the right side of the mat and then let the knees fall over to the left side. Gaze out over your right shoulder if it feels okay on your neck. And back to centre, switch the legs, wrap the left leg over the right leg, move the hips to the left side of the mat, and then let the knees fall to the right side of the mat. Gaze is going out over the left shoulder and try and keep that left shoulder down on the floor, and try and touch the knees to the floor as well. Feel the twist deep in the spine. Through this strong connection to the breath, we embody the practice for what it is. It's a meditative movement practice designed to sharpen the body and the mind to singular point and to harmonise the two.
We do this by staying devoted to our breath at all times. Come back to centre. Unwrap the legs and just hug the knees into the chest. Rock and roll and then come to a seated position. Take it back into a downward facing dog. Pull the right knee into the right wrist, setting yourself up for a pigeon again. So have your right shin bone at 45 degrees to the front of the mat. Good. Now lift the chest, placing the hands alongside the sitting bones. Bend the left knee. Take the left hand and catch the... You might want to stay here. If you want to take it deeper and you know how to, you can bring the left foot into the left elbow crease and extend the right arm overhead. Catch the hands together. If you want to take both arms overhead and work for the foot, you can do so as well. Wherever you find yourself, just make sure you're breathing deeply. Lifting the chest and opening through the spine. You can do a little dagger. Stay a little bit longer. Slowly let yourself come out. Move slowly as you come out, yeah? Bring the hands to the floor. And we'll switch it over. We'll do the left side. Left knee comes in. Left shin bone 45 degrees. It's close to parallel to the front edge of your mat if you can. I'm just going to lift the chest. Make sure you're sunk down into your hips. Bend the right leg, take the right hand and catch the right foot. You might want to stay here. If you want to go deeper, pull the right foot into the right elbow crease. And reach the left arm up, take it overhead. Lifting the chest. Now take a look at your right hip. It's probably open to the back of the room. You want to try to pull that right hip forward. Squaring the hips, lifting the chest. Stay a little bit longer. And slowly make your way out. Take a child's pose. And come forward, lying on the abdomen. Now you want to bring your hands underneath your shoulders, flat to the floor. Now bring your hands slightly wider than your mat. Extend both arms and lift the chest. Now you're going to stay here, moving the pelvis down to the floor. Bend both knees and just touch the big toes together. If you touch the big toes together, sink the pelvis down and see if you can lift the chest and take the crown of the head back towards the feet. Raja Kapotasana. Breathe deep. Point the toes, lift the chest at the same time. Good. Stay long through the cervical spine. And release down. Move your hips from side to side. Bring the hands underneath the shoulders, press back into a downward facing dog. Just allow yourself time in downward facing dog.
Step or jump your way through to a seated position. Extending the legs forward. Pull the right knee into the chest. Take the right foot and place it on the outside edge of the left knee. Ground through the seat. Reach your left fingertips high. Exhale, twist to the right. Hook the elbow on the knee. Breathe in. Breathe out. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, exhale, keep the left foot flexed, inhale, exhale, breathe in, breathe out, good, inhale, come back to centre and extend the right leg forward, pull the left knee into the chest, take the left foot to the outside edge of the right knee, setting up to twist the other way, reach the right fingertips high and as you exhale, twist. Neutralizing the spine. And come back to center, extend both legs forward. Flex your feet. Press the backs of the legs down into the floor as you remove the flesh from underneath your sitting bones. Now really remove the flesh towards the back and see if you can come right up on top of your sitting bones. Pressing the sitting bones down into the floor as you engage Mula Bandha, pull the lower part of your back up and in. Keep the ribs tucked in. Stay here, keeping your shoulders away from your ears. Start to hinge your body forward at the hips. Moving slowly towards the feet. You can put a micro bend in your knees if it's more comfortable for you. Just slowly transitioning into a forward fold. Eventually, once you feel the lower back starting to release, starting to relax, you can really extend the legs, put energy into the back of the legs and push the back of the legs down into the floor as you extend the chest towards the feet. But do it slowly, take your time. Learn your body. Good, now just keep your hands on the outside edges of your feet and see if you can inhale, lift the chest and create a slight arch in your back. Now stay there. It's a back bend in a forward fold. Pull the chest forward, see if you can arch your back a little bit more. You'll feel the stretch deeply in the hamstrings. Stay with it and just breathe nice and deep. And slowly come all the way up. Separate your feet hip distance apart, bring the hands to the floor next to the hips and press the hands down into the floor and lift the hips into a tabletop position. If you're comfortable here, extend the feet, take the full posture by extending the feet and having the feet pressing down into the floor and together. Good, lift the chest a little higher. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Inhale. Exhale, breathe in, breathe out, lift your hips, challenge yourself, strengthen the back of your legs, good, lift a little higher and lower yourself down, pull the right knee into the chest, now move the right foot to the outside edge of the right sitting bone so that you can Thread your right arm on the inside of your right leg and take it around the back. When the left arm goes around, looks for the bind. If you find the bind, you're going to extend your arms towards the back of the room and pull your chest forward, looping your shoulders back. Good. Squaring your hips, making sure your chin and your chest are over your left leg. Fold forward in Janam Shirshasana. The first stage of Janam Shirshasana is opening the right hip out to the side. Uh, sorry, Marichyasana. Your chest is moving towards the left leg. And you feel your right hip bone. See if you can lower the right sitting bone down to the floor as best you can. It will help that right hip open. 
Pull the chest forward by extending the arms back. Stay a little bit longer. Good, come up, release the bind. Extend the leg forward. Pull the left knee in. Take the left foot and place it on the outside edge of the left hip. Thread the left arm through, back and around, finding the bind. Now, if you can find the bind, you want to extend both arms towards the back of the room, pulling the chest forward, looping the shoulders back and down, making sure you're squared over your right leg as you fold yourself forward. Now, the activity of this posture, the energy comes from extending the arms away from you, towards the back of the room. That You'll feel that, loop your shoulders down and move your chest forward. Patrick, clamp her elbows with your knees and then pull your knees together and push her forward. Ta-da. Breathe. Slowly come up, release the bone. Pull both knees into the chest. Extend the legs forward in front of you, lifting the feet off the floor. Navasana. <laughs> <laughs> You're not getting out of Navasana. <laughs> now extend your arms forward, lift the chest, take the crown of the head up. Really be strong here with the extension of the spine. You want the crown of the head reaching up. If you can extend your legs, breathe deep. Lift the chest, stay a little bit longer. We're only doing one Navasana, so let's make it a long one. If you can, extend the legs, lift the heart. Breathe deep, point the feet, gaze on the toes. Good, and release the feet to the floor. Pull the knees right into the chest, open the knees wide, set up for Baddha Konasana. If you're comfortable in Baddha Konasana, you're gonna open the tops of your feet like they were a book, pressing the outside edges of your feet together, rolling the knees down towards the floor, Fold yourself forward. Press your elbows into your knees and deeply relax. Deeply relax forward. Feel the knees. Keep challenging them closer to the floor. But keep pulling your pelvis towards your heels as well. And then inhale, come up. Extend the legs forward, take the legs wide. Setting up for Upavishta Konasana. Flex your feet, pull your femur bones in towards your pelvis. Remove the flesh towards the back of the room. So that you can feel your sitting bones pressed down into the floor. And you're going to try and lift your chest up. And then roll over onto your sitting bones a little bit more. As you walk your hands forward between your feet. Now, if you can get here and you want to work a little bit harder, try and roll the thigh bones outwards as you pull the thigh bones into the pelvis, flexing the feet, pushing the sitting bones back, pulling the chest forward. Work here with activity in your legs. Strength in your legs will help you take the posture deeper. So keep activating the quadriceps and pulling them in. Keep working forward. Feel the length created in the back body. Stay a little bit longer. Good, now slowly come up. Keep your legs wide. Bend your knees in. Catch your toes. And then extend your legs up to the sky. Look up, point the feet if you can. Take a balance of the same posture. Legs are wide, Monica. Good. Lift the chest. Keep the shoulders away from the ears. Pull the elbows. Try and bend the elbows and expand the chest. Good, but point the feet while you do this. Stay a little bit longer. And then slowly bend the knees, lower the feet to the floor. Extending the legs forward, 
Lie down on your back and take your legs overhead with your feet together. Tap your big toes. As you catch your big toes, extend your legs fully. Now you might need to bend your knees as you rock up and try and find balance on your sitting bones for Ubhaya Paramushtasana. Bend your knees more, Gondra, it will help. That's it. Now, once you've found it, your feet are together, lift the chest, look straight up. Good. Try and extend the back of the legs. Breathe. Stay a little bit longer. So you want to keep your chest away from your thighs on the first one and the, and the gaze is looking straight up. Now lower yourself down onto your back. Similar posture, the next one is Udva Mukha Pashimottanasana. <laughs> so take your legs overhead, have your feet together. But this time, catch your feet from the outside. Same thing, rock up to balance and extending the legs. Legs are together this time, Monica. Now, what you're going to do, point your toes and then fold yourself in. So you're trying to fold in by pulling your elbows in towards you. It's the same as Paschimottanasana, but upright. Good. Chest moves. Chin is trying to get onto the shin bones. Point the feet out. <laughs> Gaze is on the feet. Bend the knees and slowly come down onto your back. Breathe in. Breathe out. Inhale. Exhale. Take the legs overhead. Find your way into Halasana. Bring your hands to support your lower back. Walk your elbows closer together. See if you can get your shoulders a little bit more underneath your body. And extend one leg up to the sky, then the other. Point the feet, squeeze the legs together. Let your mind be quiet, let your breathing be deep. If lotus is within your practice, feel free to bind your legs into lotus. If lotus is not in your practice and you want to try something a little bit different for your shoulder stand, rotate your legs out so your toes face away from each other and your heels touch. Then bend your knees and bring the soles of the feet to touch. If you're in lotus and you can balance, bring the hands to the knees. Balancing on the shoulders only. Have the arms fully extended and the knees just sort of hovering on top of the hands. You don't want to be putting too much weight. Those of you not doing any of the variations, come into Halasana. And if you're in Halasana, bend your knees, take your knees either side of your ears, Kana Pindasana. Wrap your arms around your lotus if you're in lotus. Squeeze in. And if you're in lotus, stay in your lotus. Lower down onto your backs, vertebrae by vertebrae. Keeping the legs in lotus. If you're not in lotus, your legs are just extended. 
and you're going to press your elbows down into the floor, lift the chest, take the crown of the head back. Matsyasana or fish pose. Trying to lengthen the front part of the body, lifting the chest, breathing deep into the back of the lungs. Press the elbows down into the floor, lift the chest, tuck chin to the chest, lower down onto your back. Release the legs if they're in lotus. And we'll roll over onto a child's pose and we'll do Shirshasana, headstand. If you know you need the wall, please come to a wall for Shirshasana. Coming up into your headstand, just let the crown of the head touch the floor softly. You don't want too much weight. Squeeze the ankles together, point the toes, send the energy up through the balls of the feet. Sophie, can you squeeze your legs together? Good, like you're a mermaid. Minerva, just bring your lower ribs in slightly and reach up. Good. See how that tried to tip you forward? You just have to extend the energy a little bit higher through the elbows, through the ball of the foot. Perfectly straight now. Stay a little bit longer if you're still up. Just slowly navigate your way down with control. Always moving the body with full control. If you want to put your jacket or your blanket over you, we're going into meditation and shavasana, so. Find your way to a comfortable seat at the front of the mat. A comfortable seat is just one that allows your spine to be upright, your hips to be relaxed, no tension through the back body, no tension through the front body. Establishing a comfortable seat is fundamental for your meditation practice because the more we can disconnect from the things that we allow to distract us, like my seat was not comfortable, I was, was noisy, all of these things, just try and let them drop away. So we'll do some breathing, pranayama, to just prepare us a little bit for going a slightly deeper into the meditation. The pranayama we'll do just involves a retention of the breath, an antam kumbhaka, which is breath retention on top of the inhale. We won't do an exhale retention today, but we're going to do a 10 second, 10 seconds hold at the top. And if this is too long for you and you find yourself needing to breathe, Please, by all means, drop the hold and breathe normally. However, the best method for staying calm is just to let your mind go blank. Not try to engage with any of the thoughts. Your brain is going to tell you that you want to breathe, but it's 10 seconds. I'm sure, I'm sure it'll be okay. So we'll empty out the lungs, prepare, and inhale, two, three, four, five, six. Hold, chin to chest, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
eight, nine, ten. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six. Inhale, two, three, four, five, six. Hold chest to chin, chin to chest. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six. Inhale, two, three, four, five, six. Hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six. Inhale, two, three, four, five, six. Hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six. Inhale, two, three, four, five, six. Hold, now this time, I want you guys to hold as long as you feel comfortable. If it's longer than 10 seconds, let it be as long as possible. Once the breathing has returned. We'll just do one more. We'll do an exhale retention. Vaya Kumbhaka. So deeply fill your lungs a few times with a few deep breaths. Deeply empty your lungs with a few deep exhales. Organize your thoughts as best you can. Be as calm and relaxed. As comfortable as you can be. So we'll inhale fully to prepare. Exhale fully, all the air out. Engage Uliana, create the vacuum, suck the walls in and up. Chin to chest, chest to chin, hold. Silence in the mind. Let your mind be completely still. When the thoughts come, don't entangle with them. Become more still. And then once the breathing has returned, let your breath return to a natural rhythm, a natural state. No altercations to the breath. From this natural state of breathing, we turn our attention to the breath. Breathing in, fully aware of the in-breath. Feel your breath enter your body. Know you are breathing in. Through touching the breath deeply on the inhale, maybe we feel a sense of connection to the trees that have oxygenated the air around us. If we feel this connection to the trees, maybe we follow it a little bit deeper. To the rain that fell from the sky, to water the soil for the tree to grow. Maybe we follow things a little bit further. From the sun evaporating the water into the sky, allowing the clouds to form, to water the tree that brings the air to your lungs. Through these processes, we begin to break down the walls of separation between us. We may seem small in the universe, But every grain of sand has purpose, every drop of rain has necessity. We are codependent, we are interbeing.
deeply let go of your sense of self. Ashmita, ego, let it dissolve. Unravel the construct of the mind and allow yourself to be present. in the stillness. Just give gratuity for the sacred miracle of life. Take Shavasana on your back, make yourself as comfortable as you can. And Shavasana is, is corpse pose. So just embody that. Let everything drop away. All phenomenal dissolving. Ramana Maharaj teaches us that if we follow the river of consciousness, eventually it leads to the ocean. All rivers lead to the ocean. And once the river has absorbed itself into the ocean, it can no longer become the river again. It is absorbed. journey of life is like following a river down the stream. And our conviction as practitioners is formed from the understanding that all rivers eventually find the ocean. Surrender to the flow of the river, surrender to your practice and deeply let go.
Let your breath become deeper. Push the air into the bottom of your lungs. Let your chest rise. Move your fingertips and your toes like it was the first time you have ever moved. Turn your head from side to side. And then roll onto your preferred side of your body. Come to a comfortable seat when you're ready, taking your time. Bring your hands together in front of the heart. We dedicate this practice to the benefit of all beings. May all beings be happy. May all beings be at peace. Namaste.